This is the hearing on Fulton County DA Fannie Willis, eligibility in Trump's prosecution. The hearing is to establish if she is eligible to continue to pursue Trump. There were some opening arguments. The judge determined, let's see how it goes, and any objections will be done at that time. Let's see how it goes. And again, Mr. Bradley, I'll ask if you can just give a pause in between each question to allow counsel the opportunity to object before answering. Thank you, Judge. Did, was the witness sworn or do I need to just Believe me, one. Great, thank you. I'm sorry. Good morning, Mr. Bradley. How are you? Um, Mr. Bradley is a previous law partner of Nathan Wade. Not happy to be here, I'm assuming. I am not. Okay. I understand. Thank you for being here. Um, wasn't my choice. Right. Um, so you were subpoenaed to come and testify in this case. I was. Okay. And But you and I have spoken previously about um, relevant facts surrounding um, Mr. Wade and Mr. Wade's relationship. No, we have not. We have not. We have not texted about those facts? Through a third party, um, you were giving some information. You and I shared text. Our text were more so about my health, um, more so about um, if I was okay with what was going on, um, that I would not be. Um, whether or not I was going to be subpoenaed or not, and that um, emphatically I would not have been sitting in this position as being called as a witness. So that's what my text chain show. Um, so no. That we've never talked about um, Willis and we having a relationship. Not directly you and I, no. We talked about my health. We talked about, um, as I stated before, um, other things, but not this, no. Okay. Um, did you text me about um, Wade and Willis taking many trips together? Uh, I object. Well, Mr. Brown, somebody's doing an objection. One, I'm going to object as the attorney by privilege. Two, I'm going to object because I seen the text message that she's attempting to impeach uh, the witness with, uh, and two, he's made all of his representations as that he's had zero communications as it relates to the issues that um, Ms. Spurgeon continues to uh, ask about, and that the only information that she has from him is through a third party, which would be hearsay. Ms. Spurgeon. Um, judge, it's not hearsay. Um, we've had these conversations. If I need to take the stand, I will. Um, if I need to put my phone into evidence, I will. So the first objection was to uh, privilege on behalf of the state. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not respond to that. Thank you, Judge. Um, privilege is only communications that are made in furtherance of legal advice. There's been no showing that whether or not they took a trip to California or took a trip or that Mr. Bradley and I talked about that, um, either in person or by text, that that's privilege. That's not, I'm not asking for any communications that Mr. Wade might have made to Mr. Bradley in furtherance of any legal advice. All right, and Mr. Abai, uh, I believe, is the one asserting privilege. It would be your burden to show the necessary foundation there. Is that something you want to board here the witness on or take up here on this specific question? Well, no, I'd also object to foundation grounds. She has not um, provided any foundation that he would have any knowledge of what she's um, requesting he answer. His answer where he had no knowledge. And now she's, she hasn't laid the foundation in order to continue to ask the same question over and over again. Ms. Merchant. Judge, on behalf of Mr. Bradley, we do object. This falls under the privileges afforded under 1.6 of the rules. And the attorney-client privilege is not something that Mr. Bradley can waive. Only Mr. Wade can waive it, regardless of any information or communications being proffered by the client. Mr. Wade would have to waive them in order for Mr. Bradley to continue to testify about any of this relationship until it's been established when that privilege should have begun. Sure. And so far, though, I haven't heard anything about a relationship, about an attorney-client relationship, about privilege ever attaching. And I think that's going to need to be established before we can actually determine the scope of it and whether this falls inside or out of it. So I think either 
Ms. Murphy can take the lead if she wants to, but uh, my understanding was that it generally has to fall on the person who's asserting the privilege. Except for the attorney is not authorized to violate that privilege or else he has in fact violated the bar rules, which we have an opinion regarding uh, from someone in the state bar of Georgia. All right. That's why I thought perhaps the sidebar might be important rather than my interjecting. Well, I'm still not going to see how we can go. So, Ms. Merchant, uh, it sounds like you're going to need to lay a, little, lay a little bit more foundation to see whether this actually is uh, is going to fall under privilege or not. That's, that's not a problem, Judge. And, and what I can do, um, I was just told that Ms. Yuri's in the waiting room, um, but I can, uh, if the state wants to read my text, if Mr. Bradley wants to read them to refresh his memory, I have absolutely no problem with that. Um, I have my phone here, and they're welcome to do that. But I'll, I'll talk about some other things, and maybe um, if they're going to have a lot of objections to privilege and hearsay, what I can do is I can lay a foundation with Mr. Bradley, get him off the stand, put Ms. Yurdy up, um, and then Mr. Wade, so we can get through the privilege issues. That might make the most sense. Thank you. Um, all right, let's talk about something not controversial then. When did you and Mr. Wade first meet? Uh, probably 1998. Okay. And um, did you all have a firm, a law firm together? We did. Okay. When did that firm start? Um, probably, I think it was 2010, we started um, exclusively working together as a firm, operating as a firm. Okay. And were you all actually incorporated as a firm? Uh, not initially, no. Uh, he had, um, I, when I um, passed the bar, and I hung the shingle in 07. Um, I think he had been practicing um, a few years prior to that. He had his own firm. We had two separate firms. Okay. At some point, did you all incorporate, though, together? We did. Okay. Do you remember about when that was? Um, I do not at this particular moment, no, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay. Um. Do you remember if it was administratively dissolved? I've been made aware that it's been administratively dissolved. Yes, I left the firm around two years ago. When did you leave the firm? Um, August of 2022, I think it was. August of 2022, okay. Well, it was either August or September of 2022. Okay, August, September, let me make a note. So at, um, in October 2019, were you all incorporated as a firm? I think we were, maybe. Okay. Yes. And when Mr. Wade filed for divorce November 1st or 2nd, um, 2021, were you all incorporated as a firm? We should have been. I'm, I'm thinking that we we were. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, when did Mr. Wade come to you to file the divorce action in Cobb County? Um, that's, that's the, 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 the timing and the beginning of the privilege, I don't believe that is uh, overall. So, the timing was around 2018, um, and it was probably December 2018. Now, this is the testimony of Attorney Nathan um, Wade. In, let's see, you also in this affidavit said that no funds paid to you for compensation as your role as special counsel was shared with Willis, correct? That's correct. Um, and that you never cohabitated with Willis, correct? That's correct. Um, by cohabitation, does that mean that you never spent the night with Willis? I spent the night with him during okay. the trial. This okay. And so when, so I just want to qualify your term, your use of the term cohabitation. That means you didn't live together. That's correct. But you did spend the night together. Yes. When was the first time you spent the night together? Your Honor, um, that's mm -hmm. the subject of his affidavit, Judge. Right, but it might not be the subject of this hearing. So the question is the nature and extent of the relationship. And so if they just spent the night on a single occasion, I don't, I, I, would be, I don't think we're going to document in detail every single time that happened. And I don't intend to do that, Judge, but I think what is relevant is when the relationship started. And that's what you had indicated on. Well, why don't we start with that question and go from there. To that question. And that's what I asked when the first time he, he spent the night with her was. That's, that's, what that's, I asked. that's a different question, isn't it? Okay, so let's not talk about when you spent the night. When did your romantic relationship with Miss Willis begin? 2022. When? In 2022. Early 2022. So you were appointed in November of 2021. Yes, ma'am. And your relationship started early. What's early? January? February? Around March. Around March. 
the two two met at an October two thousand and nineteen um, judicial conference, correct? Yes, ma'am. And um, describe your relationship at that point, then. Which point? Two thousand and nineteen. So, I was at a judicial conference to teach a course, if you will, um, to newer judges. Um, I did that in 2019. Um, as I was exiting the conference, um, another judge was standing outside who was a friend of mine. I stopped and exchanged pleasantries with, with her. Um, and standing, talking to her at the time was then Judge Willis. She introduced us um, at that time. We shook hands, exchanged business cards, and I got into my vehicle and left the conference. So that meeting was probably three minutes. When was the next time you talked to her? Didn't talk to her again, probably maybe a month or a month and a half had gone by. Okay, so you talked to her November maybe? Maybe. On the phone? On the phone. Okay. How regularly did you speak with her in 2021 on the phone? In 2020. I'm sorry, 20, 2019. I'm so sorry. 2019. How frequently did you speak with her on the phone? 2019, after the meeting, I probably talked to her two or three times. She would have questions. Um, I was the district rep for the particular district that I sat in. Um, okay. And the judges would when they would have questions, they sometimes would go to the rep. So she was outside of my district, but um, she would call me. She felt comfortable calling me to ask me the questions. I don't know if you know the, the racial makeup of uh, certain benches, but it wasn't very diverse. So she felt comfortable calling me for advice. Um, and she did that. And we had also in common that she was starting uh, a private law practice at the time. And I'd already had mine up and going. And we talked about balancing the demands of the, the bench with the private practice. So we didn't, we didn't talk that often, but when she had questions, mostly legal issues that would come up, she would come. I just want to make sure, because my question was just how many times, and you said two to three times, right? Okay. And in 2022, how frequently did you speak in 2022? This is um, before you were appointed. I'm sorry, perhaps this question is uh, to the timeline. 2022? I'm sorry, 2020. 2020. How frequently did you speak in 2020? 2020, it was uh, more, more frequent than, than 19. Um, obviously, but more frequent. Can you tell me approximately a month how often you think you spoke with her mm. on the phone? Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to object to the granular detail. And um, I, I think uh, so we can certainly answer however we want to, but if we're going to go through it every time you spoke on the phone as opposed to generally characterizing the relationship, it would uh, be more detail than this. Judge, I'm not going to go through every time they spoke on the phone. I'm asking for generally how frequently they spoke. At, the, at that level, that's fine. Thank Hello. you. About how frequently did you speak in 2020? Per month? It, I mean, if it was two or three times that entire year, you can tell me that. If, if okay. it was more than that, then you can quantify it by month. No, no, no. We, we spoke on the telephone often. I mean, I don't know how many. I couldn't give you an amount of time because you remember... COVID happened and the world was shut down. But, um, so we spoke on the phone more than 2019. Okay, let's let's qualify it. Before her election in 2020, how much, how frequently did you speak? You mean as she was campaigning? Before the election. Before, yes, as she was campaigning, before she was elected. It's, it's two different animals. As she was campaigning before she was elected. Okay, so during the course of her campaign, um, we didn't talk as much, obviously, because she was busy. Fulton County is a, a large jurisdiction to cover. Um, so we didn't talk a whole lot, but she did know 
that I had gone through the election process. So when things would come up, um, if she had questions about, she would call me and ask me. So and just to be fair, I, I'm only the witness for the judge. Actually, he's not so, asked and answered. And I mean, I don't mind him explaining, but I just wanted to know how many times. I mean, if we talk about every conversation they talked about, I. I He's got to let you go. Let him finish his sentence. And then if you need to direct him or have me direct him, I can. Mr. Wade, you can continue. Yes, sir. So, so sometimes it would be like a three-second call. She would go, have you, during your election, have you ever seen this? And I would say, no, but here's what I would do. And we'd hang up. Um, she had a lot of professionals working for her, but um, she trusted my judgment, so she called me. It, you know, be brief conversation, but she called so my question was, how frequently did you speak with her prior to her election? <laughs> frequently? Infrequently? More than 2019. Um, but it wasn't an everyday thing, no. In 2021, before you were appointed in November, so January to November 2021, only time I'm talking about, how frequently did you speak with Ms. Willis on the phone? In 2021, then it became frequent. Frequent? Yes. But you did not work at the DA's office at that point, correct? I did not. Um, so the affidavit that you submitted, um, you showed on it, you submitted one record that showed that Ms. Willis had paid a couple hundred dollars for one flight, correct? Say it again? The affidavit that you submitted to this court. Mm -hmm showed that Ms. Willis had paid for one flight several hundred dollars. Is that correct? Mm, no, ma'am. I think that... Are, are you drawing a distinction for her paying for a flight or for her actually booking a flight? Because those, those are two separate things. I will re, re-ask it. The affidavit you filed in this court, mm -hmm. you alleged Miss Willis paid for one flight. Paid for one flight, correct? No, ma'am. You, you no, did not allege she paid for one flight. No, ma'am. What I what I allege is what I allege is that our travel was split roughly evenly. So where you see I have booked the flight or I've paid for a flight with my credit card, what you don't see is that she covered her own flight. Re reimbursement to me. The so flights that the flights that you see here are the flights that she would have booked with her own resources, with her own car. And there's one flight, correct? One flight that, um, that, that she actually booked. One flight. Merchant. Let him finish and then we can redirect him. One flight that she actually booked, yes. The other flights I booked she paid for. So, the affidavit, you submitted one flight that she booked and paid for. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm going to object to the phrasing of that question. The line in the affidavit is not as Mr. Person is representing it. It said examples of the district attorney, district attorney Willis purchasing plane tickets for she and I with her personal funds were attached as an exhibit. It certainly did not represent that it was the only example of the district attorney purchasing the flights for uh, Mr. Wade or for compensating um, other travel. Uh, I understand this process. I think that's okay. As you come on to the page, kindly hit the like bell and don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so as yet. Thank you. It's now on the record, also something you can take on the cross. Thank you. And, and just so everybody's clear, all I asked you is, your affidavit, you submitted proof of one flight that she paid for. That's all I'm asking. Correct? With the explanation, yes, ma'am. Okay. That's all I needed. Um, you said in the affidavit that you roughly shared travel, though, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this roughly sharing travel, you're saying she reimbursed you? She did. And where did you deposit the money she reimbursed you? Oh, it was cash. She didn't She didn't give me any checks. So she paid you cash for her share of all these vacations? Mr. Schaefer, you'll step out and do that again. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so all of the vacations that she took, she paid you cash for? Yes, ma'am. And you purchased all of these vacations on your business credit card, correct? Yes, ma'am. Right. 
and you included those in deductions on your taxes, correct? No, ma'am. No, you did not. No, ma'am. Okay. Um, we'll get to that in just a minute then. Let's see. Um, so the only thing that you have actual documentary proof, not cash, is this one receipt that you attached to the affidavit? Is that correct? Your Honor, I object to that question. That is a mischaracterization of the assertion that is in the affidavit. I'm asking. So then he can deny it. I think he can fend for himself. Ms. Marshall. Is this the only written proof that you have of a trip she paid for? I have? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you submitted the one piece of written evidence that you have that she paid for something. Everything else is in cash. Is that accurate? No. That's not accurate. Okay. Please tell me, what other receipts do you have then that show that she paid for things? I don't have them. Okay. Okay. So this is the only receipt that you have to show that she paid for travel? I have. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. In your divorce case, you filed a domestic relations financial affidavit, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The first one you filed was in January 2022, right? Yes, and those are under oath? Yes. Okay. And um, you also filed corporate taxes in 2022, correct? Yes. Okay. And um, tell me about your, your business. Are you Do you have a partnership or are you a solo practitioner? As it says today? Yes. So today, um, I have a separate PC, my law partner has his own separate PC. Okay. So, but we're under the same umbrella, under the same roof. So we share expenses, we share income, we split it. So are you a partnership? We are a partnership in the sense of we share expenses, we share income. Are you registered with the state of Georgia as a partnership? So, the WBC firm that included myself, Terrence Bradley, and Christopher Campbell, we were registered in the Secretary of State as a partnership okay. um, for a short period of time. Um, when and that was dissolved, though, right? In 2021? I'm going to inject the witness answer question. Mr. Wade, did you have something else to add there? I did. Um, when. Uh, Things happened, and we excused Mr. Bradley from that partnership. It left Christopher Campbell and myself. So now you have two separate PCs under the same umbrella, mm -hmm. um, sharing expenses and income. Okay. So let me just narrow down my questions then. Are you registered? And have you been registered at any time in the state of Georgia as Wade and Campbell? Wade, no ma'am. Okay. You've never been registered as a partnership? As Wade and Campbell, no Wade and Campbell, yes, thank you. But as Wade Bradley Campbell, yes ma'am. Wade Bradley Campbell was registered on April 1st, 2021 and administratively dissolved on September 8th, 2023, correct? Yes ma'am. Other than that partnership, you have always <coughs> been registered as Law Office of Nathan Wade. Yes, ma'am. Not with Chris Campbell. Correct. Thank you. So the affidavit that you filed in your divorce case, the first one in 2022, I think I'm up to number seven. I'm going to just show you, give you a group of exhibits. So. We don't have to go back and forth. I'm marking the 2022 as seven. I'm marking the 2024 as eight. I'm marking the um, the credit card statements as nine, and your taxes as ten. Okay. Okay. I've got objection. Taxes. Uh, the relevance of them at this point. Uh, the relevance of this entire business structure doesn't seem clear to me as other teaching were relevant to the issues that the courts, uh, under the court's consideration, but insofar as we're talking about tax returns and other things like that, certainly that uh, should be redacted, and uh, I, I would object to the relevance of it. I agree they should be redacted. I don't agree to the relevance, um, but I haven't tried to tender them yet, Judge. 
I'm just marking them right now so that everyone can follow. All right. And what is uh, the eventual relevance that you're getting at here? Um, well, I'm going to ask him because one of the things that we have to show in this case is a personal and financial interest. So, and he's talked about how he was reimbursed for these things, and so I have a I have a right to go into the veracity of the statements. <clears throat> Um, so let's see, seven, eight, sorry, nine. <clears throat> All right, so right now I'm just going to show you what I've marked um, as these exhibits. That's my check. Mm -hmm. Can I see what you're showing? Oh, yeah, of course. They're all from the um, ice cream truck. But these are sworn. They're filed under oath, correct? Just me. And the most recent one that you filed was <laughs> filed on January 26, 2024? Yes, ma'am. So a few weeks ago. Yes, ma'am. And in that one, you said that you made $9,500 each month, correct? Yes, ma'am. You said that in 2022, well, in 2022, in this case alone, isn't it true you were paid three hundred and three thousand dollars over three hundred and three thousand dollars? I was paid. Yes, in this case, Fulton County by Fulton County. Uh, I see where you go. So, <laughs> and and Judge, I just asked him to answer the question. If he wants to explain it, I've got no problem with that. Mr. Wade, just listen to the question asked and, and just ask answer the question asked. In twenty twenty two. Isn't it true you were paid over $300,000? No, ma'am, that is not true. You were not paid over $300,000 by Fulton County? No, ma'am, I was not. How much were you paid in 2022, then? So, what I was beginning to explain was Fulton County wrote a check to my firm. Okay. What happens at that point is the checks are then deposited. As you have the bank statements, you see them. And then they are dispersed between the three of us. So there was Mr. Bradley, there was Mr. Wade, and there was Christopher Campbell. A third, a third, a third. So when you ask me if I was paid $300,000, the answer is no. I got a third of that that went to my personal firm. Now, once the money was distributed to my personal firm, firm, obviously the expenses come out of that, and I get, at the end of the day, whatever the profit is. <laughs> so I did not get $300,000. No, man. And let me just clarify. My question was not, did you put in your pocket $300,000? My question was, was the law firm of Nathan Wade paid over $300,000 in the year 2022? Again, <laughs> a third of that came to the law firm of Nathan Wade. So you're saying that the law firm of Nathan Wade did not receive checks from Fulton County government over $300,000 in the year 2022. That's a different question. Um, a, a third of the 300,000 came to Nathan Wade. Okay. Again, I'm not asking what went in your pocket. I'm asking, were, was the law firm of Nathan Wade paid over $300,000 in 2022? I know, but I think okay. we're dancing around the, the point there. So, final time, Ms. Mercer. That's fine. I can move on, Judge. Thank you. Um, so, you said that they were dispersed amongst all of you. 
um, or put into an account with all of you. So it's your testimony that for 2022, every check you received from Fulton County government went into an operating account with you, Bradley, and Campbell. <clears throat> no, 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 no. That's not what I testified to. Um, so the, the, the way Bradley and Campbell firm um, established um, an account mm -hmm. when we decided to purchase a building in 2022, at that point, every piece of income that came into the entity went into that account. Okay. And then after expenses were paid, it was split third, third, and third, right? Once that was dissolved, then the funds would go into a different account. Um, my account, one of my accounts. And then I would disperse the funds between now Attorney Campbell and myself, one half and one half. Okay. Makes sense? It, it does. Let me, um, let me be more direct then. So the Sonova's operating account that you had for Wade Bradley and Campbell. Yes, ma'am. The checks from Fulton County from January of 2022 until June 17th, 2022, those checks were deposited in that operating account. Yes, ma'am. Starting on July 15th, 2022, the checks you received from Fulton County up until May 26th, 2022, all went to an escrow account that you had at Fifth Third Bank, correct? No, not all of them. Some not of them, all of them? Some of them, yes. So, so it's your testimony that some of your checks from July 15th, 2022, up until May 26th, 2023, um, some of them went into an account outside of Fifth Third Bank? Your Honor, to the, the relevance of, of the financial transactions? How much money you made is highly relevant in this case. It's the personal financial business and where where the money was. And I mean, it's just a follow up on other things that he's testified to. And why is how much money he made relevant? Because he represented in a, in a, it, it's very relevant. He filed an affidavit with the court saying with another court, he told another judge that he made $9,500 a month. That's what he swore to. And all right. So this, this entire inquiry is just to try and, is to establish that prior and consistent statement. Yes. All right. Um, I'll give you a minute or two more to okay. try that, but we have to move on. Thank you. Um, so I know you're saying that you only got a third of the three hundred thousand dollars, but you were paid over. The firm was paid over three hundred thousand dollars in twenty twenty two. Correct. So, Miss Bunchen, it's not what I'm saying. It, 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 their numbers, they're, they're there. It's it's the it, it's the truth. The the funds were paid. They were divvied between the three of us, going into an operating account. Expenses paid out of it. Okay. At the end of that, the nine thousand figure is what you had. Um. So that's where you got the nine thousand figure from. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And let's see. Let's um. <clears throat> when you filed for divorce in November 2021, um, you would use Mr. Bradley's credit card to pay for things with Ms. Willis, correct? I've, and then pay him back in cash. I've never used Mr. Bradley's credit card. Anymore. You've never used his credit card? Never. For transactions to anything with Ms. Willis, out to dinner, anything like that? I've Hotels? Never, I've never used Mr. Bradley's credit card. I've never used anyone else's credit card. Not even my father's, and we have the same name. Um, and you'd pay pay back if you ever did use someone's credit card. You'd pay back in cash, though, correct? Ma'am, I've never used someone else's credit card. Um, can you take a look at the bank records that I gave you? That's the largest tab we have. For the record, which exhibit is this? Um, it is exhibit. It's exhibit nine. It should be the largest section you got. Your Honor, before there starts, but yeah, questions from the, the, the exhibits haven't been tendered, and I maintain my uh, relevant suggestion. All right, and let's see what the next question is, and maybe then that objection is going to be highly relevant. <clears throat> okay. Is that an accurate copy of your 
Capital One statements that you provided in discovery to, um, did, is that an accurate reflection of your Capital One records? That I provided in discovery to whom? Uh, to your divorce lawyers, or, or that you provided in the divorce proceeding. Is the, is the question, does he recognize it by sight? I'm asking if it's the statement. Thanks, I think that is the question. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's a thick document, but I, I believe you if you say that, that this is this is what my wife's divorce lawyer gave you, I believe. Your name's on every page of that document, correct? On every page? Pretty much every page, not every page. No, it's not on every page, no ma'am. They're all Capital One bank records. Sure. Okay. Just take your time, look through it. Tell me if there's anything that you think is not yours. No, no, they appear to be. Okay. Um, and those bank records show that you paid for travel with Miss Willis. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to check the relevance of these documents and the, um... Hey, hey, well, I think, are you tendering uh, Exhibit 9? I'm going to, Judge, and they're highly relevant to the... the well, he's asked some question about the contents of them and haven't been admitted yet, so why don't we start there? Thanks. Those show travel that you and Ms. Willis took. Well, so you're asking about the contents of something that hasn't been admitted yet. Right. Well, I'm asking if that's what it shows because I know that they're going to object on relevance. Well, first we've got to see if it's uh, you've authenticated it, perhaps. And before we get into other details of what's in it, I think I it needs to be admitted. That's fine. I, I'm going to admit them. All right. Object on relevance. On relevance. All right. And on that uh, overall, Ms. Merchant. Thank you. Um, those records demonstrate that you paid for travel with yourself and Ms. Willis, correct? They, sh they should. Okay. And let's just talk about that travel. Okay. Um, the first trip is Belize in March 2023. Is that a trip that you took with Miss Willis? Are you asking? Did you take a trip with Miss Willis in 2023 to Belize? I did. Did you take a trip to California with Miss Willis in 2023? I did. Did you pay for those trips on that credit card? I used the credit card to book the, the travel, but un understand. She pays back cash. Well, let me say this. Let's take the Belize trip, for example, since okay. we started there. That was a birthday gift to me, so I paid nothing for that trip. Zero. Okay. So the, the charges that are on your card, she gave you cash for? She did. Okay. So all of the charges. Excuse me, I'm going to answer the question. Oh, did you have one? I did. Okay. Um, I, I wanted to get into the, the charges on the, the car because, so traveling with her um, is is a, is a task. You can probably imagine the uh, attention that, that happens. So for safety reasons, um, she would limit her transactions. Um, I mean, imagine trying to walk through an airport or sit at a restaurant and do anything. Um, so th there was no, th there's no attempt to con conceal. It's a credit card. Everything is here. So. And, and that's not what I asked. Okay. Um, what I asked was the charges for Belize in March 2023 on that credit card. Those are things you purchased to go with Miss Wait with Miss Willis to Belize. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are things that we booked with my card that yes. she paid. Yes. Yes. So those show up on your credit card. They do. And you're saying that she paid you cash to reimburse you for all of that. She did. And she paid you cash for both of your portions or just hers? Both. Okay. So that trip, Belize, just Belize, she paid you for everything on Belize. The entire trip. Okay. So the food, tattoo parlor, all that stuff, she paid for it. <laughs> there was no there, there was no tattoo parlor in the lease. The charges there's a there's a tattoo parlor on the charges. I, I'm not getting into what it was for. I'm just asking if everything that's on that card related to police, she paid you back for. She paid please. Okay. Uh, let's talk about California in May twenty twenty three. You all went to California together. Yes. And you booked plane tickets. Yes. And her name was on this plane. They were. And so I know you said that you were worried about security and things like that, but that was in her name. 
When she traveled, she had to use her name. Oh, oh so the, the plane tickets, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you paid for those plane tickets, and you paid for a hotel. So, again, the, the, the card, yes. You used your credit card, and I'm not asking about after what happened. I'm asking, did you use your credit card to book your flight and hotel to California? I did. And um, there was a lot of Ubers on there as well for California. Did you pay for those Ubers as well? Yes. Did Ms. Ubering Willis? Nap. And you're saying that Miss Willis? Are you saying that Miss Willis paid you back for that? Yes. Did she pay for the entire trip, or did she pay for her half of the trip? The, the Napa trip. Mm -hmm. She paid for the excursions, so the the, it, the expenses sort of bounced out. I mean, there was never. Let me be clear. There was never a time when I would say, "Hey, I bought dinner. Dinner cost twenty five dollars. You didn't give me twenty five dollars." If you've ever spent any time with Miss Willis, you understand that she's a very independent, proud woman. So she's going to I have a rule, Miss Wright. So she's going to insist that she carries her own weight. And it, it, it actually was a point of contention between the two of us. She is going to pay her own weight. So let me re ask the question to make sure that you answer it. A California trip that you paid for saying that she did not pay you back for cash. Instead, she paid for excursions, and you believe that was roughly half. Well, she gave me some cash, yes. She but what I'm cash. saying is, the, the ex everything that we did when we got into Napa, mm -hmm. she paid for. The trip that she booked on her credit card in Miami, did you pay her cash back for your half of that? No. So you never paid no. her back for the tickets she bought for you? No, no. I would say I did pay her back because there were times when I would pay for dinner, okay. she would pay for dinner. It would balance out. But in a relationship, ma'am, you don't, particularly men, um, we don't go asking back for anything. So you're not keeping a ledger of things that you pay for versus the thing that she's paid for, um, which is why I said that it, it was a point of contention because she was very emphatic and adamant about this independent, strong woman thing. So she demanded that she pay her own way. Um, but she's the district attorney of Fulton County, and she has to file financial disclosures disclosing any gifts with anybody that she does business with in Fulton County, correct? Uh, I, I don't know. Okay. Um, let's talk about Tennessee. You booked a cabin in August 2023 and paid for a cabin in Tennessee. That's when you paid for it. I don't know when the trip was. Can you tell us about that? August of 2023? Mm -hmm. You booked a trip for $1,481.54. Are you, are you asking me, did I take that trip with Miss Willis? Or well, are you asking me? First, I was just asking you to acknowledge that that is correct from the records. That you oh. paid for a cabin in Tennessee. Do you recall, and hopefully you can do it from your memory. Do you recall paying for a cabin six months ago? $1,400.81 in Tennessee. Where, 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 where are we now? What page is that? I'm just asking from your memory. Do you remember paying for a cabin in August? You asked about a particular transaction. You can answer whether he remembers or not. <laughs> Mr. Wade, I'm, I'm not asking you to go through a thousand pages of records. I'm asking if you remember paying for a cabin six months ago in Tennessee. No. Do you remember booking a cabin? I booked lots of cabins. Did you go to a cabin with Miss Willis ever? Ever. Ever. Tennessee with Miss Willis. Yes. Okay. When was that? That was around 
around 2022, early 2022. Early 2022? Okay. It was a, it was a, a, a day trip. Um, okay, so you didn't spend we, the night? So it was a day trip. Okay. We would drive there, have lunch, drive back. Um, the reason we would do that is because of the attention. She didn't get any peace of mind going locally. So we get in my car and, and drive to someplace off the big path and have lunch and drive back. Is that when you went to Fane and Go with her? In the Jasper. No, that's that's in Georgia. I don't I don't I don't recall going to Fane and Go with her. So the Tennessee day trip day trips were not were only Tennessee. Yes. Okay. Did you ever do these day trips in Georgia? Did we drive anywhere in Georgia? Yeah, you were you were talking about Day trips yeah, going out, out, and I'm talking about outside of the metro area. Right? Day trips that you were just talking about, these trips you were talking about, the ones that you were, I'm only asking about the ones you were just talking about. Are all of those in Tennessee? No, we drove to Alabama before. Okay. Back. You drove to Alabama? Mm -hmm. um, did you go anywhere in Georgia? North Georgia. Uh, I'm going to object to try to direct his attention in some way to a time frame or a location, and I think it might be easier for witness well, to accurately answer. Ms. Marshall, I think if you don't have the specific details yourself, mm -hmm. uh, we need to start getting into specifics or more maybe broadly phrased questions. Um, um, it, it just be exploring around it. Is it is it fair to say that you've taken so many trips with her you don't even really remember all the places you've gone? So many trips? You're having trouble remembering going if you went to North Georgia or not. Were you asking me about specific places? And I, I want to be candid in my responses, so I have to jog my memory because these are places that I have frequented, but not with her. So I want to make certain that if there was ever a time that she accompanied me, that I was candid in that response. Um. Aruba, October 2022. And I've got um, business records you're going to get for these, Judge, maybe a little faster. Um, but did you did you take a trip with her to Aruba in 2022? Yes, ma'am. So that Aruba trip um, was, so there was a package deal there. We, um, my mother had recently retired and I decided to take my mother on a cruise. Okay. Um, and the second leg after the cruise concluded, um, D.A. Willis and I went to Aruba. So that was all one one trip, if you will. Okay. So my question was, did you go with D.A. Willis to Aruba in 2022? I did. Thank you. <clears throat> and you paid for that trip using your business credit card, correct? I did. Okay. And you paid for a cruise as well, correct? That, that's the cruise I was referencing with D.A. Willis, my mother, and myself. Okay. And because there's two cruises, so let's just talk about the first one. Okay. So the first one was um, you took that's the one with your mother. Yes. And so you introduced D.A. Willis to your mother. That trip, you all took a cruise together, three of you. Yes. After the cruise was done, you and D.A. Willis flew to Aruba together, and your mom flew home. Yes. And you paid for all of this with your credit card, on your business credit card. I did. And are you saying that Ms. Willis paid you cash back for that? She did. And no, no, but, but, but let me make this distinction, though. Um, because the, the number that you're looking at reflects the three people on the cruise ship. There were things that my mother and I did, um, just the two of us, that D.A. Willis didn't, didn't do. And, I, and I'm not attributing that. I did not. My math is not good, but I did not include anything with your mother um, on well, this. Can well, I you, show? Wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see it because it's not separated out. Um, it, it, it just shows a charge 
on the on the uh, on the account when actually it would have been something with my mother and dad. Um, Judge Mayor Kirch with exhibits 10 and 11, they're both certified business records from one from Vacation Express, one is from I thought 10 was taxes. I'm sorry, 11 and 12. And then the Royal Caribbean for just you and Miss Willis was $1,269.70, correct? No, ma'am. Your mother's got a different line item on there. I'm talking about the cruise, the actual cruise cabin. I think you need to rephrase that as in the form of a question, Ms. Merchant. Did you pay Royal Caribbean for yours and Miss Willis's cabin $1,269.70? Where are we? Which page? We're on the receipts. There's, there's just a few pages of receipts um, on exhibit number 11. Okay. Number 11. Can you direct me to where you are on in exhibit 11? The receipt for Royal Caribbean. So we've got your flights on one page. So we asked about her. And just for the record, I blacked out their um, page. And then Royal Caribbean may be on. Oh, it's small. It's hard to read. Um, it's very hard to read. So let me just let me ask it this way then. Do you recall paying around one thousand two hundred sixty nine dollars and seventy cents for a Royal Caribbean cruise for you and Miss Wallace? You don't remember that? I, that, that? That amount seems kind of small. I, I don't. I okay, so you believe it was higher. Yeah. Okay. Um, while you were in Aruba, then you bought a cruise, a Norwegian cruise, right? And that was the New Year's Eve cruise? While I was in Aruba, no man. Um, the credit card documents that were exi um, admitted earlier show the purchase date when you were in Aruba, but you don't remember doing that in Aruba? Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't purchase a, a cruise while I was in Aruba. That may be when the cruise company decided to run the invoice, but I didn't, I didn't purchase a cruise in Aruba, no man. Around the time you went to Aruba, you purchased a cruise for Norwegian for you and Miss Willis to take for New Year's, correct? Before I went to Aruba, yes, ma'am. And that was roughly three thousand three hundred and eighty-seven dollars. The cruise to Aruba. I mean, the cruise to—I'm sorry, the cruise, the um, the Norwegian cruise. So that cruise was with my sisters. Okay. Um, and the the number that you are, are seeing would reflect, um my buying dinner for my sister and their husband. I'm just talking about the cruise, the amount that was paid for the cruise ahead of time when you booked the cruise. I'm just talking about that. Okay. okay. That that was a little over $3,000. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, and I understand you, you're saying you paid for other things, but I'm just talking about the cruise amount. Okay. And you paid for a Jeep and you paid for dinner while you were there in Bahamas. Yes, ma'am. That's the one that Miss Willis paid for a flight for, correct? That's one of the flights she paid for, yes ma'am. A, a document it paid for, not cash. I'm talking about a non-cash transaction. That's what she paid for. You, you, you mean the one that I provided the, the receipt for? Yes. Yes ma'am, that's that. Okay. 
And um, so she booked that on her credit card and wasn't worried about, I know you said earlier that you were booking everything because she was worried about people knowing where she was traveling. She didn't have any fears booking that one though, correct? I'm gonna object to the phrasing of that question speculated as to what was the motivation of the district attorney. She wants to ask if that was the transaction and respond if that was the transaction. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Bush, I think you can rephrase the question, but I'll just stand on the current phrasing. Um, so she purchased that under her own name, correct? She did. Okay. Um, let's see. So I know we talked a little bit about the seminar where you all met. Um, isn't it true that you would go to Ms. Willis's house in South Fulton County I've, I've occasionally? Never... I've never gone to her house in South Fulton County. You've never gone to her house in South Fulton I've never County. seen her house. The first time I even heard the address of that house was when um, one of the individuals in the, uh, the election fraud case somehow doxed it and it got out. That was the first time I'd even seen that address. Um, but you would go to the East Point condo, correct? What East Point the condo? East Point, Hapeville, something like that. I've, I've never been to East Point with Miss Willis. You've never gone to you've never gone to a condo in either the East Point or Hateful area with Miss Willis. Wait, that's different. I have gone to a condo in Hateville. Okay. So Hateville. Yes, ma'am. So you have gone to a condo with Miss Willis in Hateville. I have. Have you spent the night there? Never. Never spent the night. Never. Is that the condo that was rented by Robin Yurt? I believe it was. And um, other members of the DA staff were there as well, correct? Sometimes. I, I've, I've never been around other members of the DA staff at a, a condo in Aikville. There's never been any security for Ms. Willis? Not around me. Um, did you ever ride with Ms. Willis with her security detail to and from the house? No. Um, you served on Ms. Willis's transition team, correct? Yes. And you were a part of all of her interviews where she interviewed and re-interviewed employees? I would say probably 98, 99%, yes. Um, is it fair to say you took an active role in these interviews? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Prior to this, you'd never worked at a DA's office, right? Have I ever worked in her DA's office? At no, a DA's office, any DA's office. No, ma'am. Um, have you ever managed a large law firm? Or a large... Yeah, I've made an objection around this. These questions. He served on her transition team, and so and what we're trying to prove is that there's a personal and financial relationship, and it was improper, um, and so, you know, whether or not he had experience to serve on this transition team, I think is relevant. Right. I think I already said it. We don't need the evidence okay. hearing on that point. Okay. So that's the same. Um, Terrence Bradley also received a contract for Fulton County, correct? Correct. You're asking me about Terrence? I asked if Terrence Bradley also received a contract for Fulton County. I believe that he did. And you were partners with him at that time, correct? I was. So under what you testified to earlier, you would get a third of that contract as well, correct? I would have. And Chris Campbell also had a contract with Fulton County. I believe he did. And so under what you've testified to, you would also get a third of that, correct? I would. Um, they both had contracts for what are called first appearance, which is where they would appear on behalf of the district attorney to do first appearance hearings, correct? I believe they, I believe they did. Okay. And um, they also had what's called a taint contract. Um, they both entered into them January 25th, 2021, correct? Filter, yes, ma'am. Taint or filter? Yes, ma'am. And that was for work in the anti-corruption unit? I don't I don't know that it was anti-corruption. I, I think that it was uh, civil rights, maybe? Okay. And, and Judge, the, um, the DA's, or Fulton County's common, I guess, broader certificate now, so... Um, we would move to admit the contracts. I've got those um, under that certificate. I was planning on doing it under the open records office, but I believe now they certified it. I just haven't looked at everything they certified though. So. Uh, I'm going to ask that the document be um, looked at and confirmed prior to its center. All right.
Ms. Merchant, is there anything else, uh, what other areas were you planning to cover on just direct other than these documents? Um, I'm planning on introducing all of the contracts and invoices, but be, I haven't had a chance to look at what Fulton County certified. Um, so I'm planning on introducing those and then um, not much. Can we do the not much? Mm -hmm. We'll do the not much and then we'll get back to the contract. Okay, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so this taint, taint contract, um, and, and we're not admitting these right now, but if I represent to you that they say anti-corruption unit, um, can you tell us what a taint attorney for an anti-corruption unit would do? I didn't have a part of those contracts. They were your partners at the time, though, correct? Oh, absolutely. Okay, and so you didn't have a part in those contracts, but you got a third of the contract payment. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so the taint contracts that Bradley and Campbell, who are your law partners at the time, had for doing taint review, you got a third of those. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, you signed a confidentiality agreement with the DA's office as well, correct? I do. And I think I'm up to Judge 13. Marking that as number 13. Yeah, no. approach, Judge. Yeah. Showing you a copy of what I marked as number 13. Uh, if you can take a look at that, tell me if that is the confidentiality agreement that you signed with the district attorney's office. It is. Okay. And this basically says you can't talk about anything that happens inside the DA's office, right? No. It doesn't say you can't talk about it? No, no, no. You said it basically says that I can't talk about anything that happens inside the DA's office, and that's not what... Are you tendering this exhibit? I am, yes. Um, we would tender 13. Miss Cross. Okay, let's see the relevance. Are there going to be relevant objections otherwise? Is Mercian relevant to this? Judge, it's relevant to his testimony. If he signed an agreement that says he can't talk about things that happen in the district attorney's office, I think that's relevant to, to this. I also think How? That he, because it's motivation in his testimony. I mean, whether or not he's going to testify to something. It's also been certified. I mean, it's part of the record as from what Fulton County gave us. Um, sure, but. He hasn't said that it's preventing him from testifying in any way today, is it? Well, I can ask him about that. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Wade, is this confidential agreement affecting your testimony today? No, sir. Okay. All right. That's fine. Right. Um, let me the contracts judge um, and the invoices that I wanted to admit, I wanted to admit all of his invoices and contracts with um, Fulton County. I have them certified. I, I guess I have them certified through Fulton County, so I wasn't sure if I needed to do that. I just wanted to know if the state had an objection to those before. Well, they haven't had, oh, they've had a chance to look at them. So is that that's the sole remaining uh, exhibit in line of questioning here? Yes. And in terms of the follow-up questions, would it just be for him to say what's reflected in these documents themselves? If they have an objection to the certificates that Fulton County has given, I would admit them through him because he could recognize right, them. But assuming they're admitted, would there actually be anything substantive he would add other than the documents themselves? No. All right. Okay. So subject to that qualification, do you have any other uh, questions of this witness? Uh, may I just have a moment? Sure. Thank you. Is it possible actually we take a break? We're getting there. Okay. <laughs>
these are the documents that you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, they are. It's all of his invoices. I mean, what kind of questions would these be other than the invoices say what they say? It just that, it, yes, that they say what they say. All right. Just talk about it. That's fine. No. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. At this point, uh, we'll take a break. I'll ask uh, the parties to take a look at. What did you do? Did you mark that as a defense exhibit? Um, I have his contracts and his invoices that I'm about to mark. Um, so before he leaves me, I just want to make sure that the state doesn't have any objections. So those are marked as? They are about to be marked. Um, exhibit 14? 14, 15, 16, <coughs> 17, and 18. All right, so 14 through 18, so I'll ask State to take a look at those. I will take a look at those and see if I can uh, match them up with the certified documents that we'll get All right, and then we'll address whether they are tendered for the record when we come back, and from there then we will turn over to the remainder of Defense Council and then the State for any uh, examination as well. So to that end, uh, let's take 45 minutes. We'll be back at 1 o'clock. Mr. Wade, uh, you're still on your oath, and I'd ask you not to speak uh, with any other witnesses about your testimony or about any testimony that's already occurred. Yes, all right. We'll be in recess. Nathan Wade, giving his testimony to the best of his ability by trying to recollect what went on between him and D.A. Fanny Willis a number of years ago. As you leave the page, don't forget to hit that like button.